The NBA draft is right around the corner. Dave Bacon takes a look at the top five prospects. One could be a Cleveland Cavalier. James Wiseman is a seven foot one inch center who is 19 years old. Only played three games collegiately at Memphis a season ago, but in those three games, he averaged almost 20 points and 11 rebounds. Wiseman is considered an elite athlete for a big man and has the ability to be a rim protector on the defensive end. His offensive game right now is somewhat limited, but he does have the skill set to develop his offensive side of the ball. Anthony Edwards is a six foot five inch guard from the University of Georgia. The 18 year old scored better than 19 points a game for the Bulldogs last year. He is known as a physical scorer with an NBA body who has a knack for making tough shots. There is a concern though about his decision making on the court. LaMelo Ball is an 18 year old six foot seven inch point guard who averaged 17 points and nearly seven assists a game last year. He is the son of LeVar Ball, so there is that, but this version of the Ball family makes flashy passes look routine. Scouts want to see him be more efficient on the court, but they believe he has the upside to be one of the NBA's best playmakers. 22-year-old Obi Toppin is a 6-foot, 9-inch power forward who was the NCAA Player of the Year at Dayton a season ago. Toppin averaged 20 points and 7.5 rebounds per game. He showed a nice shooting touch, runs the floor very well, has great strength and explosion. There are some concerns about his ability to defend in the NBA, especially in pick-and-roll situations. Denny Avia is a 19-year-old who played in the Israeli Professional League a season ago. Avia is a 6-foot, 9-inch wing player who has guard-like playmaking skills. He averaged only 7.7 points a game and needs to work on his jump shot. Denny is considered a good defender and is very good offensively in pick-and-roll situations as well. He did only make 56% of his free throws last year, though. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports in Les Levine, on a Tuesday night, we got a doubleheader action going. Chris Fedor of Cleveland.com and the Plain Dealer is here to talk about uh, what's going on with the Cavaliers, who are uh, going to have a new number one uh, pick, uh, draft pick, uh, tomorrow. And uh, Mary Kay Cabot will join us, and we'll talk about the Cleveland Browns. Hello, Chris. Haven't seen you in a long time. How are you? Plus, it's been a while. What, you haven't wanted to talk about basketball over the last eight months? What gives? There have been plenty of nights I wish we had talked basketball instead of some of the, the stuff we did. How we got through the football season and uh, un unscathed is, is beyond me. All right, let's uh, find out what's going on. Cavaliers tonight, uh, they, they, people will say, yeah, typical draft for the Cavaliers. They couldn't get the number one pick this time, but they've got the number five pick. It starts at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. What, what can we look for for the Cavaliers can we look for any trades before? I think you could. So it's interesting because I think the four teams in front of them, less have different motivations to try and um, trade. Charlotte would like to probably trade up to try and get James Wiseman. Golden State would love to trade down. They want win now players. Minnesota has motivation to move down out of the number one spot. I think the Chicago Bulls would be interested in moving as well. So. Um, from everybody that I've talked to around the NBA over the last couple of months, less this isn't a well-liked draft, especially up at the top, because there are so many questions, there are so many fears of a lot of the top prospects in this year's class. Now, you can say that about a lot of drafts, but even more so this year. So I think a lot of those teams would like to move out if they can. But the problem is, who's going to move up? Who's the player that these teams would want to move up for? I know that the Cavs have had conversations with the Boston Celtics who have three first round picks, including the 14th overall. I know that the Cavs have had conversations with the New York Knicks who now have former Cavs executive Brock Aller in the, in the front office there. Um, the Knicks have the eighth pick. So could the Cavs work something out there? I, I think trades are going to be speculated about. I just think it's going to be hard for a lot of these teams to find the right trade partner and actually have movement, especially in the top five. All right, so let's say nobody, none of these teams find what, what they want. 
It's just a straight up draft. We go one, two, three, four, five. It comes to five. Based on what you think is going to come before number five, what do you think is there for the Cavaliers? Is there a match somewhere along the line there? So, Les, I think there is a match. Um, the Cavs had a meeting on Monday with all the members of their scouting staff in the front office, and they went through their um, final rankings, and they assembled their big board, and they made final tweaks to it. But that could change. That could change between now and Thursday night. Um, it's a very, very uncertain class. There's um, a lot of prospects that you can talk yourself into, and those same exact prospects you can talk yourself out of. Well, what, are you, what, are you talking, what are you talking about, off the court issues or, or just on the court? I think it's a combination of both, right? So like LaMelo Ball, you can talk yourself into the fact that he's a supersized point guard, probably the best passer in the draft, but he played in Australia. So what does that mean for a level of competition? He came across in interviews as immature and cocky um, and I think there are questions about whether you want to make him the face of your franchise. Anthony Edwards is really, really talented from Georgia, but he didn't win in high school. He didn't win in AAU and he didn't win at Georgia. So if he's so talented, why don't his teams ever win? James Wiseman, really, really talented, tons of skill set to be a two way big down the road. Right now, he can probably come in and impact games on the defensive end with his rim protection and his switchability. He played three games at Memphis, three games less, and 25 of the 28 made shots that he had were layups or dunks. So what do you do with that in terms of an evaluation? And then you can go down the list. Wait, well, well, I, I know the answer. You, you, you set up an offense that only has layups and dunks. Sure. Sure. I mean, like NBA teams are just going to give those up constantly, right? <laughs> I mean, they're not going to play any defense these days. Right. So you can go down the list with all those guys and talk yourself into and out of any single one of them. Um, but but I think the Cavs, less are going to pick from a pool of four to five players. And I really think there isn't a consensus right now based on the conversations that I've had. And I still think they're deliberating on who is the best fit and who's the best talent for them at number five. And I think the four to five guys that they're considering, Israeli swingman, Denny Avdia, Dayton's Obi Toppin, I'm sure everybody around here knows about him, Auburn's Isaac Okoro, Florida State's Patrick Williams, who is considered the fastest riser in the draft, Tyrese Halliburton from Iowa State, and I guess on the outside of everything is USC's Onyeka Kongwu. Now, one of those guys that I mentioned probably will go number four to the Chicago Bulls, um, and maybe that makes the Cavs' decision a little bit easier. Right. Wiseman is the guy who intrigues me, but then when you say he only played three games that, and, and the team got in trouble because of s some activity, um, that sort of takes points away. Yeah, and everything that I've heard about Wiseman is he is not getting past Charlotte at number three. Charlotte, if you look at the roster makeup, screaming for a center. So... A lot of people feel like James Wiseman is going to go two to the Golden State Warriors. They need a rim runner. They need a rim protector. He can step in and be their starting center. Um, if he gets past Golden State at two, I think Charlotte at three would scoop him up. All right, so the Cavaliers who uh, need, need uh, some PR on the good side got some bad stuff over the weekend. It got a little worse today. Explain what happened with Kevin Porter Jr. Well, you know, it's not a good situation. For KPJ. Um, this comes on the heels of a cryptic Instagram post that, that he made uh, about a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago. Um, it was so scary for members of the organization that they reached out to him to make sure that he was okay. Um, look, I had a couple of people talk to me at the start of this whole shutdown um, about how they were going to try and keep all of their players engaged and active and in the usual structure that they're used to when it comes to basketball activities this time of year. But look, it's hard. It's hard. These guys have been away from the court in, in the environment that they're used to for eight months. And one of the players that the Cavs were worried about was KPJ because they felt like when it was the season and he was surrounded by his teammates and surrounded by coaches and in the structure and given a day-to-day -day routine, he was able to stick with that. But that all changed in March with the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the, the belief is right now um, that it was just one mistake for KPJ. 
Um, he's 20 years old. He has to learn from it. Um, but, but it's certainly not a good thing when you have somebody like this who fell to the 30th pick of the first round last year because of the questions about his maturity, because of the questions about um, whether he can uh, continue to do the right things off the court. And, and now here we are in his first off season as an NBA pro, and he made a mistake the way that he did. Um, the good news is um, the Ohio State Highway Patrol said he wasn't impaired, um, but you know, still not a good situation for him. All right, Chris, we want to talk uh, next time we can grab you. We want to see if you're opening the, uh, the, the season tomorrow, who your starting lineup would be. But we'll do that as, uh, as we get closer. Thanks so much for joining us. You got it. Anytime, Les. Chris, uh, Chris Fedor does a great job with Cleveland.com and the Plain Dealer covering the Cavaliers. Mary Kay Cabot will join us. We'll talk some football when we get back. More sports and less than is, is powered by Cleveland.com. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Do you like Ohio State football? Would you like to get information from me, Doug Maurice, about Ohio State football without having to look at my face? We have got the plan for you. Become an Ohio State text subscriber through cleveland.com. You send a text, 614-350-3315. What do you get? Two, three, four texts right in your phone every day about Ohio State football. Inside information, polls, voting. All kinds of things. You can be on our podcast. We take text subscriber questions on our Buckeye Talk podcast every week. If you really want to be involved with Ohio State football, in season or out of season, become an Ohio State text subscriber from Cleveland.com. Send a text to 614-350-3315. 14-day free trial. What do you have to lose? $3.99 a month after that. 614-350-3315. I'll see you in your phone. Tri-C is here for you. Now more than ever, you need a post-secondary education. So I encourage you to start your journey here at Tri-C. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, Tri-C is where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Thanks to Chris Fido who joined us as the Cavaliers get ready for the uh, draft tomorrow night. Should be interesting, uh, no, no question about that. Mary Kay Cabot joins us tonight. We're going to talk some football. Right, unless you want to talk basketball, what do you want to do? It's up to you. Chris just did such a fabulous job. I think you're all set for tonight with that. <laughs> well, good night, everybody. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Another Browns win. It is getting so boring to me. What are we going to do about that with another – potential win coming up Sunday. I know. Here you go. I believe they're going to win the next two games, that they're going to be 8-3, and three, that they will overtake the Baltimore Ravens for second place in the AFC North over the next couple of weeks. Oh, my God. The Ravens have the, yeah, the Ravens have the Titans and the Steelers coming up in the next two weeks. Uh, the Browns have the 3-5-1 and one Eagles and then the Jaguars. Uh, so I, I firmly believe they're going to be 8-3, and three, in great shape to make the playoffs, and I think they will overtake the Ravens for second place over these next two weeks. You know, we've been hearing all season long that uh, if the playoffs were going to start now or if the Browns uh, get to a certain point, 
now you're bringing up ter uncharted territory when you say you think they're going to be eight and three, and you think they'll be in great, they'll be ahead of uh, Baltimore. That that's unbelievable. Well, you know, it's just the way that the schedule is working out. I'm not going to say that they're going to be that way uh, when the season is over. But over the next two weeks, I think their playoff chances will increase dramatically. Right now, the number eight seed, they have about a 45% chance to make the playoffs right now because of their record. Uh, but because they have the easiest schedule the rest of the way, they're in this uh, bunched up 6-3 club with six other teams. But because they have the easiest schedule the rest of the way, I really think that their chances are very good. Yeah, you're talking about the two New York teams that, uh, near the end, both both on the road. What, have they made uh, their plans for travel on that? You've got the uh, – it's Christmas time, obviously. Um, they're going to fly in and come back after the game, or are they going to stay there? No, they'll, they'll just – they'll fly in. Uh, come back home and then go back up the next week with COVID and everything going on. There's no way right. uh, that logistically they would be able to pull anything like that off. So that's not in the cards. All right. So everybody making so a big deal about Nick, Nick Chubb and what he did uh, going out of bounds at the end of the, uh, the play when he could have just stepped in for a, for a touchdown. They're making it seem like this is the greatest play in the history of mankind. That was the only, not the only play, but it was such a smart play. It's, it was an obvious play. It shouldn't have surprised some people. And if it's the people who are surprised are people who don't really understand the game. Well, he had also been reminded and, and told to do that. I mean, it had a name. It was called No Mas. Uh, that was what was required in the moment. And the only thing that he really had to do was remember to do it at the end of such a long run uh, instead of letting those instincts take over and just uh, keep on going. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, – it was, it was great on the part of the Browns to, to make sure that they told him to do that, and it was great that he followed through. All right, so the Browns get back trying to celebrate the, the win, and then they find out that you got a problem with the, you know, the COVID. Uh, somebody has, uh, was uh, tested positive, and fortunately for the, uh, the Browns, it, it could have been a lot worse. Absolutely. Two weeks in a row now, they have really dodged a bullet in terms of the contact tracing. When Chris Hubbard tested positive last week, none of the other offensive linemen or any of the other players, for that matter, also had to be high-risk contacts and go home for whatever, five days. Uh, but in, in this case, Andy Janovich, the fullback, has tested positive. Uh, if he's symptomatic, then he is not going to be able to play this weekend. He has to stay out for a minimum of 10 days, I believe it is. Uh, but they also, once again, Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb, did not become identified as high-risk contacts, and they're ready to go. So when we go out to practice tomorrow, they will be there practicing business as usual. What did we learn, if anything, from the about the Browns team with that uh, nice win at home? Well, you know, we really learned that they have a, an amazing, amazing one-two punch of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Uh, and they, they did what they needed to do. They closed out the game by just running like the wind in, in the second half of the game. And that's great. It's not always gonna, going to be that easy, but it will be easy a lot this season because they are playing uh, some defenses that are similar to that. We have to keep in mind that this was the 32nd ranked run defense. So while it's great that they ran for 230 yards against the worst run defense in the NFL, probably not going to happen like that against the Baltimore Ravens. Probably not going to happen like that when they play the Pittsburgh Steelers again. Uh, so they just have to make sure that they stay multiple and that they can do all the things that they do well. When they need to pass, they can do it. When they need to run, they can do that. All right, during this break, could you just give me the entire play-by-play? -play? My, my uh, power went out before the game started and I, I missed everything. Can you just start with the kickoff and take me take sure. take me home? I'll just run you right through the whole thing. I, I I'd have to grab one of my other notebooks. But did that really happen? You didn't get to watch the game. I uh, eventually saw it. Uh, they edited it out to make it look like the Browns won that game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were. I would have to say almost a little bit fortunate, right? I mean, the way that yeah. that went when uh, Deshaun Watson closed to within. 10 to 7 with 459 left in the game. Didn't he like really, it. And then, you know, the fumbled, uh, the muffed kickoff return there, starting at their three, 
they needed uh, to close that out the way they did with those great runs by Kareem and Nick. No, no question about it. All right. Uh, you, wow, we're going to mark that down. You say in two weeks they're going to be even with Baltimore or ahead of Baltimore? Ahead of Baltimore. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't think Baltimore is going to win both of these next two games. Right. Okay. If they do, they will have to beat Pittsburgh to do it. Undefeated, now, probably, Pittsburgh. To now, do did, did you do your homework assignment we gave you, the one where we said, what, what does the uh, referee actually say? Who, what does he warn a team about when he says the two-minute warning is coming up? I did not do my homework on that. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I, I kind of loafed around a little bit on the, on the bye week, and I, I didn't do my homework. But right. I promise you I will look into that, and I will figure out what it is they get warned about at the two-minute warning. Absolutely. You can bring an apple in for your teacher here, too. That would be great. <laughs> Mary Kay Cava with us. She does a fantastic job with the, with the uh, Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. She'll be back in a moment. Uh, Northeast Factory Direct. Three great locations, but the best location, northeastfactorydirect.com. To find out all, uh, about all the great deals, you're going to save maybe half on many of the uh, purchases that you make. Guaranteed low pricing at North, Northeast Factory Direct. We'll come back in a moment. We are powered by cleveland.com. Mary Kay Cabot with us. We'll talk Browns. Transform your home for the holidays with an authentic Nature Stone garage floor. No more tripping on cracked, uneven concrete. Stop slipping on puddles and standing water. It's the safer, more beautiful garage floor that's easy to clean and never needs replaced. That's why it's backed by Russell's Promise. For a limited time, get more Nature Stone than ever before with up to half your garage floor free. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com to qualify for your free flooring. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Thanks for welcome back to more sports and Les Levine. Les, Mary Kay, for the second straight week, the Browns faced heavy winds in a game, and for the second straight week, Baker Mayfield did not throw a touchdown or a pick. Dan Orlovsky of ESPN is pretty critical of Baker Mayfield right now. He's looking at the last game. He's saying the first four first downs of the game were passes, but every first down but one for the rest of that game were runs. He says it looks like the Browns offense is trying to protect Baker Mayfield like they're scared to run their offense through him. It looks like they're scared to go, Baker, we're going to put the ball in your hands and let you lead us to victory. So, Les, Mary Kay, I want to pose that question to you. Do you agree with Dan Orlovsky? Do you think in any way, shape, or form the Browns are scared to put their ball in Baker Mayfield's hands right now? Mary Kay, I don't think they're scared. I think they're smart. You're right about that, Les. First of all, uh, you cannot judge Baker's passing game or the Browns passing game from these two games. It was ridiculous down there with the winds. I mean, my goodness, even Kevin Stefanski was talking about how uh, the wind almost grabbed his play sheet out of his hands a couple of times in that game. It was insane. I mean, the first game against the Raiders to watch, uh, you know, a, a kicker line up to kick a field goal and aim it completely right and then watch it just Karam completely left. I mean, it was unbelievable so it was like when you throw the football it was like throwing a ping pong ball into the wind uh so you you can't judge him off of that they had to do what they had to do in these two games uh they had to be smart about it and they were uh the first game i i attribute that against the raiders mostly to dropped passes but i i don't i i don't agree in these two games with with what dan is saying 
Don't you think it would be a smart play on, on uh, Kevin Stefanski's part if, if he thought the wind was going to blow the play sheet out, he should have fake play sheets and let it go to the <laughs> other side and let, <laughs> let them try to decipher what the heck they're going to do. Yeah, just let it go and uh, and hope it lands right over there. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I mean, they, they didn't need any help in screwing up that game because, I mean, Romeo didn't go for it on, on uh, fourth and two and tried to kick a 46-yard field goal instead in that game. So I don't think they needed – uh, any help in messing things up. That's unbelievable he would do that. It's a, that's that's the rookie coach's mistake. Yeah, I, I don't I don't understand it. I I mean especially in uh, in those kind of conditions to try to kick a 46 yarder there instead of the Browns had I think uh, allowed 13 of 14 fourth down conversions to that point. Well that's and not good. It just it was, it was a no brainer. Okay, so you have Romeo who was here with the uh, Browns for what four years I think and you, mm -hmm. you've you've covered an awful lot of coaches over the years what is there something different about Stefanski other than the fact he's winning football games is there something different on the way he either handles uh, situations that come up on the field off the field uh, with the media with the uh, players what what is there something different or is it too early to tell no, I don't think it's too early to tell. I think he's doing an amazing job of just handling everything. I was I was told by Brad Childress early on that he would be unflappable. I have found him to be that. I think he's handled every situation just exactly as you would hope that he would. I, I was saying earlier on a podcast that I did today with Scott Pasco and Dan Lobby that, I mean, could you imagine Freddie Kitchens trying to navigate this team through COVID-19 and social injustice? I mean, I, I just can't imagine him. Uh, trying to do everything that this uh, that this group has had to do to get this team through this very very challenging season, I can't say enough about the job Kevin Stefanski has done. Hey, what about you as, as a uh, uh, reporter analyst uh, uh, who covers the Browns and does such such a great job at it? Is this like if they make the the playoffs? Is this like a reward for all your years of coming up empty on on stuff, or or don't you think of it in, in a personal term like that? I really don't. I don't look at it like that at all. The only people that I ever think about in terms of uh, the Browns finally getting good and making the playoffs are the fans because my heart breaks for this long suffering Browns fans. I am related to a lot of them and <laughs> uh, you know, I've grown up here and even though I'm objective in my job because I obviously have to be, uh, I really feel for the fans every single Sunday all these years of covering this football team when I go to that game I just really want happiness for the people that have just stuck by this team through thick and thin so that's you know those are the people that I'm excited for as far as covering the team I mean it's you know I go to work I do my job win lose draw and you know I'm, I'm fine either way but uh, there's a whole bunch of people out there that deserve great times. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. You can see that at the bottom of the screen. Mary Kay continues on with us. Right now at Smiley One, they're making it easy to invest in a new heating or cooling comfort system without breaking their budget. For the limited time, take advantage of the special financing 36 months on select Bryant High Efficiency Equipment and make it easy for your family to stay comfortable all year long. So call Smiley One for further details. Tomorrow night, the D-man Dennis Maniloff will be here. And uh, who's coming up on Thursday? Daryl Ryder, the D, D Ryder, He's moving up in our in our play, uh, playlist. Uh, we'll do that and more when we get back. More sports and Les Levine, powered by Cleveland.com. We're living in uncertain times, but you don't have to put your future on hold. At Tri C, you can move ahead while staying safe and saving money. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, check out Tri-C's programs and resources, because Tri-C is where futures begin. Well, hello, everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only $3.99 a month, you can get text sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, 
You'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week, and it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash browns, the blue banner at the top of the page. Or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216-208-3965. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at smileyone.com. And welcome back to more sports than Les Levine. Les, Mary Kay, the Browns offense got a big boost when they got Nick Chubb back this week. But perhaps just as important was the fact that they got Wyatt Teller back. In fact, Wyatt Teller was named Pro Football Focus's Offensive Player of the Week. He was the Offensive Player of the Week in his last full game as well when he played back in Week 4 for his dominant run blocking. And he took home the award in his first game back for the exact same reason. He thrived in Kevin Stefanski's outside zone, heavy rushing offense against Houston and did so well at, that, at the start of the year. At this rate, we might see Teller, who currently has a season grade of 96.8, set the new record for best single season grade at his position. So, Les, Mary Kay, Wyatt Teller has one more year on his contract after this year in his rookie deal. My question to you is this, though. Is it time for the Browns to start looking at possibly extending him? You first. You know what? I would. I, I would do that. I would start. Um, I would start to have uh, talks with Ryan's agent. I mean Wyatt's agent about extending him. Uh, absolutely, one hundred percent. He's young. He's in the prime of his career. Uh, he has nailed down that right guard job, and I, I think that. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that you hope happens when you make a trade like that. He's exceeded all expectations. He's almost playing at a Pro Bowl level right now. He actually probably is playing at a Pro Bowl level. And I would go ahead and do it. I would take Teller all the way to the bank. That's what I would do. <laughs> now, here's a guy I, last year, um, you know, it was a throw-in. And it's not a throw-in anymore. There's a lot of teams. You know, when you think of offensive linemen, you think of them as a group, and you're not going to get all guys at 100%, and you're not going to get them all at 20%. You hope to get two real good ones, one good one, and then two guys that can hang in there or rotate around. This, this offensive uh, line is right up there with the uh, defensive line and um, the running back situation. It's a, it's a pretty good situation for the Browns right now, and they have some depth. Yes. It really is a good situation, and it was one of the priorities of Andrew Barry when, when he came here was to build that offensive line and really protect Baker Mayfield. And they 100%, they put money into it, uh, they put thought into it, and it was also one of the things that uh, Ryan Grigson, the former general manager of the Colts who is now on the Browns staff and helping and advising Andrew Barry, he really emphasized that you have to do that. You have to protect your young quarterback. And if you can do that, uh, then he will be successful. Your running game will be successful and everything will flow from there. So Wyatt Teller uh, has been 
the most pleasant surprise of the whole first half of the season, and then everybody else on that line is playing really well too. You know, when you when you think about it, uh, Andrew Barry, you normally you normally see when a new guy comes in or a new regime comes in, they they get rid of just about everybody they can. This they're actually giving credit, e even though they're not saying it, just by the way they use some of these players, they're they're giving some credit to the previous administration. Yeah, and if you re will remember, Andrew Barry was part of the yeah. previous administration for, for a while. So he was here when they drafted Baker Mayfield. He was here when they drafted, uh, you know, Denzel Ward and Nick Chubb and Miles Garrett. So a lot of these, he was only gone for one year. He was only gone in 2019. And a lot of guys did come in in 2019 that he wasn't a part uh, of that. Right. But he was a part of a lot of the rest of this roster. Uh, so I think that that shouldn't be forgotten. Do you think this, the decision has been made on Baker Mayfield yet, or when do you think that'll happen? Or, or won't, they, won't they put any work into it until the season's over? Oh, no, they're putting work into it every single week. Every week for him is another, like, midterm exam that he has to really pass and, and show that he deserves – uh, whatever it is they are going to give him in the offseason because uh, they do have, as we've talked about so many times, those big decisions to make. So here's kind of where I see it going right now. Uh, in order to get a long-term sort of blockbuster type extension, I mean, he really would have to show uh, unequivocally that he deserves that over these next seven games because we, we haven't seen it yet to this point that he's amazing. Uh, to get that whatever that 30 million dollar to 40 million dollar contract you have to be amazing uh, then to not get anything at all you have to be absolutely horrible if he falls somewhere in the middle i think that he will get the um i think that he will get his fifth year option picked up and then they will move forward with him and see how he does next year in his second year in the scheme and then they'll go from there right it's not like you can just go to the quarterback tree and find another one to replace him so you, you've, you've right. got to you got to make the right decision. you got to make it fairly soon. Uh, as you know, if you can't reach us uh, while the show is on or you're not uh, here to do that, you can go to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. That voicemail number is 216-200-6650. Ron Beyer checked in today with a question. Hi, Les. This is Ron Beyer. Les, a NFL player who gives 110% effort all the time, whether it's in practice or game day, a player who thinks of victories first instead of individual stats or praise. This type of player is what I call a franchise player, and that player is Nick Chubb for the Cleveland Browns. The Browns' management must make him the top-paid running back in the NFL. With that type of player on our team, his effort and desire will rub off onto the other teammates which will equal unity and hopefully many victories for the future, especially with the running combo of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. What do you think, Mary Kay? Make him the highest paid uh, running back? Well, I suppose if, if you are going to extend him, he probably would have to be made the highest paid running back if he's the next guy up. Uh, and I, I probably would go ahead and, and do that, or I would come pretty close to doing that because – uh, you know, he's almost the face of the franchise in some ways right now because, as we just mentioned, Baker Mayfield hasn't established yet that he is great. Uh, Nick Chubb is great. And uh, I would go ahead and I would start talking about extending him this offseason. And it's not just Nick alone, but it's that one-two punch. It's that two-headed monster of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. It's devastating. Most teams don't get to have two guys like that. And as we know, they both rushed for 100 yards in the same game. First time since 1966 that that happens. Again, it was against a 32nd ranked run defense, but it was a tremendous performance by those guys. And I think that they are almost like a lethal weapon together. And I would keep it going as long as they can. Yeah, but they're, they're not similar players. They, they offer enough differences that uh, defensive uh, uh, coordinators have trouble to designing a way to stop them. You might be able to stop yeah. one. I don't know that you can stop both. Right. It's different energy. It's different styles. Uh, I mean, they, they both really bring the intensity, and they both run harder than heck. But 
uh, they do have different styles just in terms of vision and shiftiness versus home run hitter. Uh, you know, they each bring their own strengths to the table and they do give a defensive coordinator nightmares because they can hit uh, the home run ball. And it is as effective as a long pass when you can break off, obviously, a long run like that. Mary Kay Cavett with us from the uh, Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. Northeast Factory Direct is with us also at uh, four locations, if you include the website, northeastfactorydirect.com, Macedonia, Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid, and West 140th near the airport in Cleveland. And we'll come back in a moment. More sports and less Levine is powered by Cleveland.com. Transform your home for the holidays with an authentic Nature Stone basement floor. Add more livable space, inhibit the growth of mold and mildew, and improve air quality for your family. It's the healthier, more beautiful basement floor that's easy to clean and never needs replaced. That's why it's backed by Russell's Promise. For a limited time, get more Nature Stone than ever before with up to half your basement floor free. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com to qualify for your free flooring. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. This date in uh, sports history, November 17, 1956, Syracuse running back Jim Brown. I think I heard of that guy. He scores 43 points, six touchdowns, seven extra points, and a 61-7 to win over Colgate. The Palmolives didn't play very well that day. It was an NCAA record at the time. He had no field goals in that game. Tom Seaver was born in the state, of course, passed away uh, in the last couple of months. Jim Beheim, of, uh, speaking of Syracuse, the Big E, Alvin Hayes, uh, and as well as uh, Gymnasium. Good basketball player born in this state. Reggie Wayne and uh, Ryan Braun of the uh, Milwaukee Brewers all born on this state. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Mary Kay Cabot is with us. Mary Kay, we're going to see Carson Wentz uh, this Sunday. Um, how, do you, how do you figure this guy? One day he looks like he's got it. Next day he doesn't. What, what, do, you, what do you attribute that to? You know, I'm going to attribute it to a lot of injuries on, on that on that offense right now. I, I don't know. I I really liked Carson Wentz coming out in, in 20, was it 16? Uh, I, I really, really liked him a lot. And uh, it's disappointing to see him struggling the way that he is. They, he has, I think, leads the league with 12 interceptions right now. Uh, obviously, that's way too many. So I, I just think it's a systemic problem more so than it is a Carson Wentz problem. But they're going to have to evaluate it and, and see if he has real issues and if, uh, you know, and if they might have to decide to go in another direction. Wow. Well, you, you hear that all the time. You, 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 think, you think picking a franchise quarterback when he's there for you, you think that would be an easy job to do, but it, obviously it's not. It's really not. It is really, really not. I mean, think about this. Let's just talk about Josh Allen for a minute, who came out in 2018 uh, the same year that Baker Mayfield came out. Uh, I went to the Senior Bowl that year, watched him there, 
he had an arm that was a little bit like a wild stallion. He would throw it and the ball didn't know where it was going. Josh didn't know where it was going. The receiver didn't know where it was going at times, but he had a lot of talent and ability. And there was something I really liked about him. I talked to a lot of people about him, including some quarterback gurus that felt he could improve his accuracy. A lot of people did not like him at all. The analytics people graded him worst in the class and he's doing very nicely night right now. It's really hard to try to figure out how these quarterbacks are going to be and how they project into the NFL. And you said one of the problems is the injuries that the uh, uh, Eagles have had. One uh, player, tight end Zach Ertz, could return on Sunday. He hasn't played since week six with an ankle injury, but that adds more to Wentz's arsenal uh, if, if he's able to play at full go. Absolutely. I mean, you know, a quarterback in many cases is only as good as the talent around him. I mean, if you take... Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt away from Baker Mayfield, Baker's probably not Baker. So, uh, you know, Carson Wentz has not had a full complement of uh, weapons around him, including his running back just got back last week. As you men mentioned, Zach Ertz has been out. They have issues on the offensive line. I mean, you can't expect a quarterback to work with miracles, and I think people uh, don't take, take those things into account enough. How about the defense of the Eagles? Well, one thing that they do well is they can pressure the quarterback, okay? So that is going to be something that uh, they're going to try to do this weekend. They are going to try uh, to pressure Baker Mayfield and, and rattle him a little bit and get him off of his game. What we don't know yet is what the weather is going to be like because it's a little bit, bit too early to determine if this is going to be the third straight weather game right there at First Energy. Uh, but these guys are going to try to get in there and, and disrupt – Baker Mayfield a little bit and do some of the things that other defenses have done to him. And you can see the numbers there. Um, I can't see the numbers there, but you can, <laughs> uh, they, um, you know, they, they've got, they've got 10 takeaways again, you know, they're, they're sixth in pass defense. And one of the best things that they do is, is get a little bit of pressure. And that's what Baker Mayfield has to show, uh, that he can hold up against. I'm wondering, with the uh, Eagles, why don't they just announce that the game's going to start at 4, and then that's when the storm will hit, and they can get it in if it's starting at 1. They could fake out the weatherman. Yeah, maybe. Boy, I mean, I, it was just so weird and so bizarre at the stadium uh, the other day because it was bright and sunny for a while in pregame, and then just right during that national anthem, it was like the football gods had something to do with it. They decided... Uh, that they were going to shut down Deshaun Watson and his high-flying offense and uh, really it worked. helped out the Browns that day. It worked pretty well. It sure did. Yeah. All right, let's take a yeah. break. We're going to come back one more time with Mary Kay Cabot, the voicemail of Truth and Reason, that phone number. You can reach us anytime, 24 hours a day, 216-200-6650, and uh, leave us a message, and we will uh, get to it as soon as we can. Mary Kay and I finish up one more time. More sports and less Levine is... Uh, uh, right here on uh, cleveland.com. Transform your home for the holidays with an authentic Nature Stone garage floor. No more tripping on cracked, uneven concrete. Stop slipping on puddles and standing water. It's the safer, more beautiful garage floor that's easy to clean and never needs replaced. That's why it's backed by Russell's Promise. For a limited time, get more Nature Stone than ever before with up to half your garage floor free. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com to qualify for your free flooring. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. 
Teachers can be honored as a teacher of the month. The Ohio Lottery partners in education where stars shine. Tomorrow night, the D-Man, Dennis Maniloff, uh, D-Man's World, he uh, joins us. And then uh, we'll have uh, dangerous, the dangerous one, Daryl Ryder, that'll be on Thursday. You can uh, watch us live from 6 until 7 p.m. Eastern Time and archive us anytime the rest of the day uh, throughout uh, various sources to do that. Um, email comes in from uh, Paul in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Les, after the bye week, I thought I would see better play calling to involve Baker with quick passes and screens to help with his passing game. I also thought changes with the safety and linebacker could occur, which did not happen. Does the coaching staff still want to change this, or is the DNA to depend solely on the running game, the defensive line, and Ward at the corner? What do you think? Well, first of all, they did make some changes. Uh, Ronnie Harrison has nailed down the safety job, and then they worked some Sheldrick Redwine in there. Uh, so that was one of the changes that they made. As far as offensively, uh, once again, this this was not a game to evaluate Baker on the, uh, you know, on his passing game. Even Kevin Stefanski said yesterday it was, it was just not a game for the forward pass. You know, it just it just really wasn't. I thought it was uh, interesting. So I thought it was uh, interesting when he said they were checking with the other coaches on a play-by-play -play basis of whether they could throw a pass on the next play or not. Yeah, I mean that's that's what the weather was like. It was insane. And you saw at the end of the first half, uh, Baker had an opportunity to try to put some more points on the board. And there were three throws in a row where he kind of threw behind his man. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones was able to reach behind and, and make a really nice catch of a, of a pass. And then Kareem Hunt tried to twist his body and try to get the pass thrown behind him. And he just wasn't quite able to do it. And then Baker sailed a pass far over the head of Jarvis Landry and into the end zone, which it seemed like the, the wind probably just took that. Yeah. So it was just not a day to try to figure out uh, how to how to make Baker look good through the air. Let's go back to the phones. BP is in Pepper Pike. BP, how are you? Hey, Les and Mary Kay. It's great to talk to you both. How are you doing? Great to, great to talk to you. Great. Thank you. Good. Great show, great show so far. Also, um, I did want to mention... I've been a little – of course, I'm happy the Browns are 6-3, and three, and really they should be 7-2, and two, but that's another story. But I have been disappointed the way they're using these tight ends. Like, I know the weather has been really bad the last couple of games. But really, Austin Hooper, you know, they're paying him a ton of money, and on paper, you know, he looked like he was going to be sort of like a pro bowl player. I'm not really seeing it. You know, he had, I think, one target in, in last – you know, the, the game from the other day, and really he's on target to catch – maybe, you know, 40 catches for like 400 yards and two touchdowns if you extrapolate, you know, the season out. And then even, you know, the rookie who was looking pretty good, he didn't get any targets in the other game, and then Njoku didn't get any targets. So I wonder if Mary, Be uh, Mary Kay has any thoughts on, you know, I, of course the weather's been bad, but, you know, looking at, you know, the eight games as a whole, I mean, nine games, you know, it's been a little bit weak with the tight ends, especially with OBJ being out. What do you think? And do you think they could try to work? You know, either Harrison Bryant or Njoku is almost like a receiver, sort of to take, you know, help take up the slack from OBJ being out. Well, I agree with you 100%. And I think that was going to be the plan in the second half of the season to get those tight ends in there more and, and try to get uh, a lot more out of them in two tight end sets and some three tight end sets, which I think we'll see more of. And you're right, Austin Hooper has not had the type of production that we expected at all. Uh, but in that first half of the season, the passing game just wasn't up to snuff. And uh, he's got, I think, 23 receptions right now. Missed two games after the appendectomy. And you're right, he only had one target, uh, and he caught it for 11 yards in this past game. But now, 23 receptions for a guy that you're paying $10.5 million a year. It's not his fault. He's not just getting the opportunities. So I, I think that you will see more of that going forward in these last seven games. Again, they weren't able to do what they wanted to do in the past two games, also in part against the Raiders because they only had the ball for 17 minutes. I mean, they just couldn't stay on the field uh, and, or get back on the field in that game whatsoever. So you, you know the, uh, I think that the plan is to use them more, and I think they will. Yeah, the game before, not, not the past game, but the, the game before that, uh, they didn't know if they were going to have Baker for the for that game for m much of the week, right? Well, he did not practice 
uh, a, a couple of those days. So yeah, he, uh, you know, he was kind of hurting in, in that one, but, um, but yeah, they got done what they needed to get done from a, a practice standpoint. They made up for it, but uh, it just, the games just haven't lent themselves to what they really wanted to do in the passing game. They still have a lot of faith in Baker, and I think they still have a lot of faith that they will get those tight ends utilized. I mean, they've got three really good tight ends that could be starting for any team in the All NFL. Right. Now, he, he, BP also mentions that, you know, talking about targets and going different different ways, it's not the and how much they pay certain guys. That's not the coach's job. To he, he, it's not like little league where everybody's got to play three innings. I mean, you you one of the things Stefanski said when he first came here is we're going to pick different ways to beat different people. It's not going to be the same game plan for everybody, and it'll be individually individually uh, game planned. And I think they've they've kept to that pretty well. Yeah, they they really have. Goodbye, they, goodbye, they have but go ahead, as, Mary Kay. As you move, oh, go ahead. No, you go. Um, as they move forward, not not this season, but as they go forward into the next few seasons, you will you will have to decide if you want to allocate that many resources to uh, to the pass catchers if they're not going to be contributing that much. I mean, when you look at Jarvis, Odell, and Austin Hooper, they're all in the double digit millions. And if you add it all up, I think they have a total of four touchdown catches. And and one of them came from Jarvis Landry to Odell Beckham yeah. Jr. So you're just not getting the production that you thought. Go ahead, BP. If I may ask one more, one more question of Mary Kay, since, um, you know, Grant Delpit, you know, was obviously was a second-round pick, highly, you know, touted player. I mean, do you think – he tore his Achilles at age 22. That's really unheard of. Do you think he'll be able to come back close to 100% and be effective? Because, Or do you think he's always going to sort of be maybe like a C player or a B player and not like an A player? What do you think about and what are you hearing about you know, the prospects of Grant Delbert going forward? Well, I think, that the, I think the Browns are very confident that he's going to come back fully from this torn Achilles surgery, that he's, he's young, as you mentioned, so young when this happened if this had happened to a a 30 year old that's a different story but when you're that young i think they have every reason to believe that he will heal fully now i've looked up uh recovery from achilles and about 78 percent of players return and play at a very high level so that those odds are pretty good for him uh, so i think right now the browns are very optimistic that he will be back next year as their starting safety and be everything they hoped that he was. I wonder what, uh, what, what was the statistic that applied to Achilles Smith? <laughs> oh, never mind. BP, sometimes I can't help myself. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, uh, Wes, I did want to get your thoughts on the NBA draft. I have none. Uh, I, a <laughs> wise man told me the Cavs should, you know what a wise man told Yeah, me? the wise man from uh, Memphis. Yeah, draft James Wiseman. Okay, very good. Thanks. Thanks, BP. Take care. More importantly, thanks to Mary Kay, who, as usual, did a tremendous job. Although you get more points if you come up with the, uh, what, what they say on the uh, two-minute warning. I completely forgot. I'll try to have that for you next week. Take, take notes on that. Thanks so much. We'll see, you, we'll see you soon. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Great job by Mary Kay Cabot, as always. All right, we'll see you tomorrow night. We've got, uh, we've got the, the D-man, Dennis Maniloff, then the other D-man, the dangerous Daryl Ryder. Uh, he will be here on Thursday. We'll see you then. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.